Hi there folks, this is Graham Carroll here, alias the Warrior Unknown, if you've watched any of my videos on YouTube. Now today, in Piano Lesson 106, I want to show you a few techniques about how you can, how to build chord voicings, like how to voice a, a chord. For instance, you might, you might get a symbols like that where you've got C major 7 the first three symbols at the top all stand for C major 7 or you've got C major 7 add 9 or C major 9 or C major 13 but really they all kind of come under the gamut of a C major 7 and when you're you've got them symbols on your on your song sheet you can use any of these chords to when you're playing through the song. But anyway, this is my right hand, that's middle C. So if I was playing C major 7 in root position, C, E, G, B, there's your notes of your C major 7 chord, left hand there. When you uh, want to do voicings or when you want to voice, you're just rearranging the notes of the chord in a different order so as to get a better sound or an unusual sound or change the feeling or the way the chord affects the music so that's the aim to make make it sound more beautiful actually that's it in a nutshell folks so if I if I play root and seven there in my left hand leave out the third and fifth there and put the third and fifth in my right hand here that's like what you call an open voicing when you spread it between two hands like that and it's in root position because you've got the C down below like that and my advice is when you get a shape like this don't just learn it in your C major 7 position if you're in the key of C make sure you kind of move it up and down the scale like so you know D minor 7 E minor 7 etc till you get right up you know or you can move it down the scale, you know, going down to B minor 7 flat 5 or A minor 7 until you get right down to C major 7 again. Practice moving the, the shape because once you've got one shape, you'll find that you can move that shape on every chord. And that is a chord voicing, folks. And that's just one way of doing it. But you, you could play... D there in your right hand, B there, and you might just have G there and C there, and there you've got another voice in for C major 7, like that, you see, so you've got G in your left hand there, C, E and B, which is when you play this kind of voice in where you're using either the notes of E, G or B, as your root note, then you're playing what they call a rootless chord, so because you've left out the that C note there, you know, that's the root position. But when you leave that out, you're you've come out of root position basically, you're playing an inversion. But that's another nice voice, and you can move it around and the same, move it up and down the scale, you know, B minor seven flat five, A minor seven, you know. G7, F major 7, like so. So remember to practice it like that, no matter what shape you um, you get. And of course, you might only play a voice in one hand. You might just play G, B and C like that. And that could be a left hand call voicing for C major 7. You don't have to play every note. So long as you, you have, you've got the 7th, in there folks and you might have put the root you've put the root on top the C there you see that and that's another nice voice and you can move it around the same you know and use it for all the different chords on the scale the same you know so you're going if, if I'm there C major 7 then I drop down B minor 7 flat 5 you know A minor 7 you know G7, F major 7, or you can go up, and if you look at it, if you, if you look, 
if you've looked at my earlier videos, you'll know that that's root position, that's first inversion on a seventh chord, second inversion, you see that, and then you've got another inversion just, just here, folks, third inversion, and then you're going to be back to, see, so you can do other voicings, you see that, you know, like that, you've got a voice in there. You see that there's another C major voice, seven voicing for your left hand. But all these voicings you can play them in either hand, it doesn't really matter. Or you can combine, I might play it with my right hand there, and then I might put a ninth in the bass, like if I want to make it a C major nine, like so. Or I might just leave it open, or if I want to put the 13th, the note of A, on top, or I can put it on the bottom there. You know, there's lots of options, or you can put the, the 9th and the 13th there, folks. And then you could make that a 10th in your left hand, so C and E. A, D and G, like that folks, and of course as you can see it's a very nice sound, and remember to learn to move it up every, every chord on the scale, you know, that's your D minor 7 position, you know, E minor 7 position, but it kind of comes out because you're hitting that F there, you're getting an 11th in that chord, folks. You know? So, uh, this is just a few voicings, but this is just some of the things you can do. And of, of, and of course, some of the things like, like that, folks, you can use like some of the, this right hand voicing, you might use it in your left hand, you know, for, for some of the chords as, as a left hand voicing, you know. So you might be playing like that, folks. You know. And then, then if you put that note of B in there, you know, it's kind of like you've got a 13th. It's, you've got a 13th from C major there. You've got a 7th. From the, from the scale of C major, and you've got a ninth, you know, plus you've got the third below like that, or you might just play it like that. So you've got like a, what they call a suspension, but you can see what I'm getting at when I'm saying about voicings, a lot of it is to do with, well, in fact everything is to do with your ear, folks. Sometimes you don't want to, you don't want to, take notice of that literally you might find you pick a couple of notes from any any one of these chords you might pick the the D from the ninth you know this the B from the major seventh and you might have the root the C you know or you might get the A from the major 13th and you and try and make a shape out of it like so oh yeah I can make a shape out of that so I've got oh I've got an A there oh I've got a B there that's from that's the 13th, that's the 7th. You see what I mean, folks, like that. And then you might even put a C up there. And you can get some unusual sounds. You know, like, that is a C major 7. You see, when you put the root in, you get that lovely warm sound. And of course, move it up and down. You see that? So what you you might want to do, you might want to make an arpeggio and practice. Like in that kind of fashion, folks. So you know, if you if you so you play a B there, a C there, and an E there. So you've got part of the C major 7 chord there, of the third, the third inversion. You 
might put your bass in down here. You might want to play a simple rhythm like going. take it up to D minor 7. Sorry, let me talk about it. It's easier to talk first. I talk but and say, well look, you know, move it up, move, move the voicing up and down. Make sure you get your shape. Oh yeah, I've got my shape there. And, and you'll notice that it's the same, exactly the same shape on every position on the scale. So that voicing, you're practicing every possible voicing on the scale. And you want to always make a ba, 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 you know, a rhythm, a simple rhythm, any, any rhythm whatsoever. So long as, you know, you can get your drum machine, you can get your metronome to get yourself much tighter. I'm just giving you a rough, rough example of how you should practice it. And of course, you know, you might be going... saying to you that if you get any particular shape, whether it's just your fifth in your left hand, a fourth in your right hand, always move it up and down the scale. And then you've got you you can start making up little tunes like kind of a musical way, you're just moving it around and that's the best way to get used to a voicing and you can do some, you can get some really interesting ones like I say, get, get your 13, get your 9th, you can even double the 13th, you know you can get some really unusual sounds like so. And if you want the major seven in there, the B, just like that, folks, you know, and you've got some really great sounds. So you can move up and down from a tenth to a ninth. Even, you can even put the thirteenth down, down in the bass, which is really just an added six, really, folks. But it sounds a bit muddy down there, folks. But if you just if you play it there, for instance, like that, so you've got C and A there, D and G there. It's what they call a six nine, really. But a six nine, well, what's that? It's the it's the thirteenth, really, because the six is the thirteenth. So that's a good point to remember, and. A ninth is just a second, really, in, in a scale played an octave higher, like I, t I taught you in lesson 105. You know, so you can move these voices like so. And of course, you know, doing little arpeggios, doing something really, really simple.
I'm just using a voice in there. C, G, B, C, E. So I'm doubling the C there. I'm playing the C twice. You can do that if you want. And there's all kinds of voicings. Then if you want to make the 13th and the 9th and the 7th, you can do it like that. You can squash the voicing up. So you've got C, G, A, B, D. And if you want, you can put another note on top if you want to give it even more of a... Or take the 7th out. So, you know... Practicing like this is a really good way just to get used to the shape and that's all you need to do and use your ear like practice all different shapes and you know try different combinations put a tenth remember and your thirteenth your ninth like that you can even put an eleventh in there gives it a kind of really weird sound you know or the thirteenth as well Ninth in the bass, take the ninth out there, you know. Really strange sounds, you know. Or if you get a shape like that in your right hand and you keep your left hand the same, the tenth, you can do what they call a moving voicing. So you can. Right up and down the scale. You don't have to play a tenth, you can play a ninth, or just an octave. But notice, notice it has a very musical effect and you can literally get a tune just by keeping your left hand doing a, a bass line going. folks you know try different shapes see what have I got there I've got the ninth I've got the fifth from the major seventh from the scale and I've got the thirteenth and I've just got an octave in the bass you know so move that shape and then of course you can move the whole shape up, moving the bass up to the next call, like D minor, you know, like that. And you can do tenths in your left hand, or ninths, you know, sorry, like that, sorry, that's the tenth, so that would be D to F. Notice you get that lovely modal sound, folks. And you can spread it out. Just move the same shape in your right hand. Take the triad, just take a triad, just take a straight triad, you know. So what have I got there? Sorry, let me see. G, B and E, E, B, G, or E, G, B, E minor triad, there, over D minor, or over C major. 
Right, C major 7, there you are. But you can see my point, you can just move these. See how you get the different voicings just by moving one hand. You can even leave that note out in the middle and just move a six this, like so. You want a more open sound. And then you can change the distance of your left hand again. It's better to play a fifth usually. See, so just playing a root position triad of G major over a tenth yeah, C and E in your bass. Notice the beautiful sound. There's your C. That's that's your C major seven. And then change maybe. Spread it out, you know, something like you can move it up and down like that, seventh octave, seventh octave, so so I do it in C major. and all I'm doing is going like that in my left hand but did you see the effect there folks you get a lovely you can make music until your heart's content just practicing voicings and shapes and once you get good at doing that in the key of C my advice is try and do it in other keys and the possibilities of what you can do are just about endless so I hope I've really shown you like what you can do there with and always remember, get a little rhythm going, you know, whatever it is, play a bass line. Like so, you know what I mean, anything you want. Anyway. This is Graham Carroll saying, if you've got any comments or questions, just, just leave them below the video. I do my best to answer. And I hope that's cleared up a few things about the, all those kind of things that I showed you there, kind of centre around this, this, this chord symbols here. And you can use all that kind of stuff when you, when, you, when you play them. And like I say, take them one at a time and move them up and down the scale. Anyway... Got any comments, like I say, leave them below the video. I'll do my best to answer and have a nice day over and out. And I'll see you in the next video, folks.